Turbos. There are many types of it and different layouts and different supplementary systems for it. Like Turbo, Twin Turbo, Tri Turbo, Quad Turbo, Variable Geometry Turbo, Twin Scroll Turbo, Variable Twin Scroll Turbo, Electrically Assisted Turbo, Electric Turbo, Sequential Turbo, Parallel Turbo, Series Turbo, Twin Chargers, a Hybrid Setup, then Power Pulse and Ignition Delay Type Anti-Land. <sighs> Each having different advantages and limitations and specific uses. So, how does all these terms actually relate to performance? Let's untangle in this video. Well, if you don't have any idea about how turbos work, I recommend you checking the short video first. And if you know, then let's get started. The simplest, cheapest and the most common setup is using a single conventional turbo. It has a specific rev range in which it performs the best. If it's meant for low rev range, then it doesn't help much at high RPM. And if it's used specifically for boosting power at high rev range, then it results in a lot of turbo lag. This type of turbo is mostly used in very economic cars only. To solve the problem of narrow working rev range comes the role of VGT, means variable geometry turbo. So if conventional turbo is like this, where the speed is completely dependent upon the discharge rate, then the variable turbo is like this. At low speed, at low discharge rate, the geometry is slightly modified for high velocity, and at high discharge rate, the geometry is optimized. A variable geometry turbo looks like this. At lower revs, having lower exhaust gas flow rate, the fins are tilted for narrow opening to increase the velocity of gases to spin the turbine faster. And as the engine revs increases, the fins are tilted for wider opening. This is done to ensure that the back pressure isn't created. Otherwise, narrow opening increases pumping losses, as the engine will have to push harder to throw out the gases, ultimately consuming its own power, which is not desired. The back pressure at high flow rate can be visualized this way. VGT works in wider rev range and also gives slightly more boost than conventional turbo. But if you want quick as 0 to 60 and also want top speed above 140 mph, then it's just not perfect. For that, there is twin turbo, also called as bi turbo. There are three types of using multiple turbochargers sequential, parallel, and series. In sequential turbo layout, first turbo works at lower revs, and both of them work at higher rev. Then there is one more modification of this. Small turbo works at lower revs, a bigger one at mid revs, and both together at high revs. Then there are parallel turbochargers. Let's say if there is a V-shaped engine with multiple cylinders, then making a complex manifold and putting a bigger turbo doesn't make much sense. So Parallel turbos are used, one fits one cylinder bank and another one the other one. Third is series turbos. This isn't actually used for automobiles. The setup is specifically used in old airplanes for compensating low air pressure at higher altitudes, where the first turbo compresses the air in first stage and the second takes that compressed air and compresses it even further. The tri-turbo, quad-turbo setups follow the same configurations, just multiple of them are used. Like Bugatti uses four quad parallel turbos for their W16 engine. Then there are twin scroll turbos. It is like having two turbochargers in same assembly. This turbo is same as conventional turbo. The only difference is it has two exhaust inlets. One connects half the cylinders and other the another ones. In the end, both of them force out air on same turbine. This solves a very different issue of pulse overlap. In any multi-cylinder engine having more than 4 cylinders, the exhaust stroke of one cylinder will overlap to some degree with other cylinder's exhaust stroke. So in an 8 cylinder engine, at least 2 exhaust strokes are going on simultaneously. So if all the cylinders are connected to same manifold, then the pressurized exhaust pulses will interfere with each other. This creates cancelling forces, increasing the pumping losses and reducing the effectiveness of the outcoming exhaust to spin the turbine. Hence, separating the cylinders having overlapping strokes allows the exhaust gas to perform at its best. Now, for this you can also choose twin turbo. So why use twin scroll? In comparison with twin parallel turbo, 
Twin Scroll Turbo does the work in single compact and lightweight assembly, which is also cheaper than using two turbos. One more significant advantage is lesser turbo lag, as there is only one set of rotary components, hence having less inertia, resulting in quicker spin even at less exhaust gas rate. Next is variable twin scroll turbo. A variable twin scroll turbo is combination of variable geometry turbo with a twin scroll setup. So at low engine revs, one of the scroll is completely closed, forcing all the air into the other one. As all the air has to travel from a narrower path, the velocity of the gases increases, spinning the turbo faster. This results in good response even at low RPM. Then as the engine revs up, a valve gradually opens to allow the exhaust gas into the other scroll. With this, you get a good high-end response. Next is electrically assisted turbo. This is mostly found in F1 cars. It's called MGUK. It's a turbo with an electric motor. At initial acceleration, the battery powers the electric motor, which spins the turbo shaft. Hence, the turbo remains pulled up and gives instant boost even at low revs. At deceleration, the motor can also act as generator, restoring the energy in the battery. Then there are twin charger cars, which have a supercharger and a turbocharger both fitted in one. Both work simultaneously. At lower revs, superchargers perform best, but later it fed out. And the turbo doesn't work well at low RPM, but it gives a strong boost at high revs. So they both compensate each other quite well, giving continuous boost. Just the thing is, the assembly becomes more complex, heavy, space consuming and expensive. Also, as the supercharger is used, some engine power is utilized to spin it, reducing the power going to wheels. One thing to mention here, the superchargers used in twin charger setups are positive displacement superchargers and not centrifugal ones. There's a good reason behind. Centrifugal machines doesn't perform well at low revs and centrifugal superchargers are no exception. The superchargers get rotary input from crank, hence at low engine revs, centrifugal superchargers doesn't perform well. So, it doesn't make any sense to use it in twin charger setup as low end boost is what's expected. And well, the only difference between centrifugal supercharger and a turbo is centrifugal supercharger is driven by engine and the turbo is driven by engine exhaust, while the compressing side for both is just the same. So it's pretty obvious that both have similar limitations. So twin chargers just use positive displacement superchargers, like screw or more often root type supercharger. This type of superchargers add a lot of weight and also consumes more space and also cost a lot. But it does give the boost from very start, which is the best thing. Next really interesting system is what Audi calls as electric turbo, which is actually a twin turbo setup with an additional electric supercharger. Now this sounds something different, a twin charger with twin turbo. It's a complex system, but I will try to explain it as simply as possible. As in regular twin charger cars, the supercharger is directly powered by the crankshaft of engine. Generally, this connection is permanent, so the engine powers the supercharger all the time, even at high RPM, when its boost is less significant. And this results in wastage of engine power. The advantage of using electric supercharger is, it can be switched off anytime, which is a good thing as it will not consume power all the time. But it comes at a cost of complexity and added electrical system. Audi uses 48 volt battery for this so that the performance of supercharger is not dependent upon other electrical loads. This battery powers the electrical supercharger which is a centrifugal supercharger. Here comes the great part. In this setup, supercharger speed is dependent upon the speed of electric motor which spins it and not on engine drives. So it spools up pretty quickly as the motor is capable of reaching 70,000 rpm in less than quarter of a second. Hence, this supercharger does provide a boost at very low engine revs. After that, when the engine makes sufficient gases to spool up the turbo, the supercharger is shut off and the twin turbo setup does the work ahead. Now, what if you don't want to add any weight and complexity and still get no turbo lag? You get anti-lag systems. These are supplementary systems to reduce turbo lag. If you remember this,
these aren't just show off flames. This is actually an ignition delay type anti lag system. If you want to know more about it, check out this video. But before moving to that, there's one more anti lag system yet to be explained. Before we do that, make sure you subscribe the channel and hit the notification bell to get notified for future updates. And also make sure you hit the like button. Next and last system to be explained is Volvo's specific power pulse. It uses an onboard air compressor and a pneumatic storage, which it also uses for air suspension, to avoid turbo lag. At the time of acceleration, a strong pulse of pressurized air is put into the turbocharger, which speeds up the turbo, eliminating the turbo lag. And that's all about the turbos, its layout, and anti lag systems. Thank you for watching. And the link to the video is here.